In this video, we will show three different methods for calculating the cost of equity to be used for the cost of retained earnings. We will also calculate the cost of a new stock issue. Consider a stock with a beta of 1.2, next year's expected dividend, D1, of $3 per share, a current stock price, P0, of $50, a growth rate, G, in the dividend, of 7%, risk-free rate, RRF, is 3%, which could be a proxy of the U.S. government T-bill, market expected rate of return, RM, of 12%, an example of that could be the Wilshire 5000 or the S&P 500. And consider the company's bond yield to be 7%. And for the average company, we will assume that the equity yield is 6% above the debt yield. Under the capital asset pricing model, we would say the cost of equity for the company is RRF, the risk-free rate, plus the market risk premium, the difference between the rate of return on the market and the risk-free rate times beta. The Excel formula for this is going to be G10, where 10 is again the T-bill rate of 3%, plus G11 minus G10, which is the market rate of return of 12%, minus the risk-free rate of 3, or 9%, times the beta of our company of 1.2. This gives an estimate for the cost of retained earnings of 13.8%, again using the capital asset pricing model. We can also get an estimate of the cost of capital using the residual dividend model, which would be D1 over P plus G, or the dividend yield plus the capital gains yield. When you're filing taxes, dividends go on your Schedule B, and the capital gains go on your Schedule D. For our company, the dividend yield is 3 over 50. The capital gains yield for a constant growth stock is 7. The two of them add up together to 13, relatively close to the capital asset pricing model estimate. The simplest way of calculating the cost of retained earnings is the own bond plus risk yield approach. In our example, the bonds of this company pay 7% interest, and we're assuming for the average company, the equity is expected to return 6% above the debt. The two add together to be 13%. If we average these three different methods of calculating the cost of retained earnings, we get around 13.3%. In the case a company is not going to finance with retained earnings, but doesn't have enough capital through retained earnings to finance all of its new projects, we might do the cost of a new stock issue. The important variable to be added to this is the flotation cost. In this case, 15%. It could also be given as dollars. And this is going to be the percent of the stock that is sold that is given in value to the investment company, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, whoever, who finances or underwrites the new stock issue. So again, we use something similar to the dividend, residual dividend model. Now we stick in the flotation cost of 15%, which is going to be around $7.50 of the stock price. And since that money goes to the investment bank, this would increase the cost of capital above the 13% for retained earnings to around 14%. This is why it is more costly to finance with external stock issues than it is with retained earnings. Thank you for watching this video.